The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to your distance learning program. I am your geography teacher, Akwembe Minet Edom. Before we get into our lesson, let us correct the assignment of the last class. And the assignment states that we name any two features of intrusive volcanicity. Name any two features of intrusive volcanicity. The answer, we have a dike, seal, facolith, lopolith, and many others. So the dike, the seal, we said any two. So it could be a dike, a seal, a facolith, or a lopolith. We get into our lesson. Lesson 13. Features of volcanic interest or features of volcanicity. And we'll be talking about intrusive features. Intrusive features. As our overview, we have learning objectives, we have previous knowledge, situation in real life, learning activities, exercises, and assignments. Learning objectives, previous knowledge, situation in real life, learning activities, and ex exercises, and assignments. What are our learning objectives? The first learning objective, we should identify, you should identify the various intrusive features. You should identify the various intrusive features. Two, you should describe and explain the formation of these features. Describe and explain the formation of these features. Three, draw a generalized sketch. Draw a generalized sketch diagram of intrusive features. Draw a generalized sketch diagram of intrusive features. Previous knowledge. Remember we talked about volcanoes in our last class. So let's try to find out or recall with the help of some questions. Question number one, what are plutonic rocks and where are they formed? What are plutonic rocks and where are they formed? Answer, these are igneous rocks formed with magma cools and solidifies very slowly within the Earth's crust. These are igneous rocks formed when magma cools and solidifies very slowly within the Earth's crust. Question number two. What name can we give to landforms formed from plutonic rocks 
when magma solidifies within the crust. What name can we give to landforms formed from plutonic rocks when magma solidifies within the crust? And the answer is intrusive volcanic landforms or features. Intrusive volcanic landforms or features. All right. Concerning our real life situation, houses built on the slope of the hills around your quarter collapsed, destroyed property, and killed people. Houses built on slopes around your quarter collapsed, destroyed property, and killed people. What advice would you give people in order for them to stay safe in such an area? What advice would you give people in order to stay safe in such an area? We are going to have answer, an answer to this question or answer this question by the time we get to the end of our lesson. All right, we move into our lesson proper. Intrusive volcanic features. Now, what are intrusive volcanic features? These are features formed from the cooling and solidification of magma within the crust. They are features formed from cooling and solidification of magma within the crust. They are seen on the surface after a long time of erosion. That is, these features can only appear on the Earth's surface after erosion must have taken place. So intrusive landforms or features are those features that are formed within the crust and they are formed when magma is injected in the crust, then it cools and solidifies. Now, the diagram we have presents the intrusive features. And when you take a look at this diagram very critically, you see a whole lot of these features. We begin from below. You can see batolith, which forms the root of mountains. We can see a seal across seal. Then we have a dike. You can see that this dike is cutting across bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. Then we have the flow of lava. This is our mountain or our cone, which sends out molten material and we have lava flow. Then here we have the lacolith. All right, these are the intrusive features. Now let's take a look at these intrusive features. The first major intrusive feature is the seal. The seal is a horizontal or gently inclined layer of magma which has solidified in between the layers of sedimentary rocks. The seal is a horizontal or gently inclined layer of magma which has solidified in between layers of sedimentary rocks. The dike. A dike is a vertical wall of magma that solidifies across the bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. A dike is a vertical wall of magma that solidifies across bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. 
When exposed, they may stand out as walls. When they are exposed, they may stand out as walls, which are resistant in relation to, their surrounding, to the surrounding rocks. For example, the Cleveland Dyke of USA. Now, let us go back to our diagram again so that we can really see the seal and the dike. We said the dike solidifies across bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. You can see it here. It is cutting across bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. And we said they can be exposed and stand out and stand as a wall in relation to the surrounding environment. All right, the seal on the other part, it cools and solidifies along the, 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 the bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. The seal does not cut across. Instead, it cools and solidifies along the bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. You can see here the seal, and this is another seal. All right, we move to the third intrusive feature. Lacolith. A lacolith is a dome shaped accumulation of solidified magma along the bedding plates of sedimentary rocks. It is a dome shaped accumulation of solidified magma along the bedding plates of sedimentary rocks. They are formed when viscous lava heats up. They are formed when viscous lava heaps up. For example, the Black Hills of South Dakota in the USA. Now let us go again to our diagram and identify a lacolid. Here, you can see the lacolid, a dome-shaped feature. See the accumulation of, of, of molten material that has cooled and solidified. Here we are, the lacoli. All right. Next feature, facolith. The facolith is a lens-shaped mass. The facolith is a lens-shaped mass of solidified magma. The facolid is a lens-shaped mass of solidified magma. Example, a condon hill of Shropshire in England. The condon hill of Shropshire in England. All right, we said a lens-shaped mass of solidified magma. All right, those are some of the intrusive landforms. In addition to that, we have the batolith. The batolith, on the other hand, is a huge extensive mass of solidified magma inside the cross. The batolith is a huge extensive mass of solidified magma inside the crust it is formed or it forms the base of most mountains it forms the base of most mountains for example the chilu highlands in gabon let us go back to our diagram again and identify the battle we can see from the diagram a huge feature at the base, huge dome-shaped feature, bigger than a lacolid, and we say it forms the roof of mountains. You can see at this point, we have events moving right up to a mountain. So here we are, the battle All right. The next intrusive feature we have is a lopolith. And lopolids are saucer-shaped igneous intrusions 
along the bedding planes. Lopolites are saucer shaped igneous intrusions along the bedding planes. An example of a lopoli we have the Bush Veld Igneous Complex of South Africa. The Bush Veld Igneous Complex of South Africa. There we can find lopolites. All right. Before we move to another exercise, let us take a look at the diagram again. Just for recall, we said intrusive features are those features that are formed within the earth crust. They are formed inside the earth crust, not on the earth. And we have a series of these features. Remember, they are formed when magma cools and solidifies within the earth. Now, examples of these features, we said we have the seal, which lies along the bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. We have the dike, which cuts across sedimentary rocks or bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. We have the lapoli, which is a dome-shaped feature where magma cools and solidifies. Then we have the battle which is a huge dome-shaped feature that forms the root of mountains. Then we equally have a saucer-shaped feature. You can see that. Now, remember we equally have the, the lupolites, the facolites. All right. Remember our situation when we started our lesson. In that situation, we said the houses around the mountain in our locality collapsed and destroyed farmlands. Now, these houses collapsed and the farmlands were destroyed basically maybe because of volcanic eruption. Now, what can we do to avoid such um, um, problems. How? What can we do? What can we do to to avoid uh, such problems, or what can we do to survive in those kind of zones? The first thing we can do is to avoid staying in those risky zones because those kind of areas are considered to be risk zones. The next thing we have to resettle our displaced population. We have to resettle the displaced population, which means that we remove people from such areas and keep them in areas that are safer. Next, we should avoid carrying out agricultural activities like, we should avoid carrying out agricultural uh, activities like agriculture around those hilly environments because this, it can make the slope to become unstable. All right, those are some of the things we can do in order to avoid um, such hazards in these areas. Now we move to our exercise. The first question we have is, an intrusion of magma along a bedding plane is called a, a dike, B, batoli, C, seal, D, lava plain. An intrusion of magma along a bedding plain is called A, a dike, B, batoli, C, seal, and D, lava plain. And the right answer will be C, that intrusion of magma along the bedding planes is called a seal. Number two, 
The largest intrusive feature, the largest intrusive feature is A, A, dike, B, sail, C, lacolite, and D, batolite. The largest intrusive feature is A, a dike, B, a seal, C, lacoli, D, batoli. The right answer is a batoli. Now remember, the batoli will be one of the biggest intrusive features. We said a huge dome shaped feature which forms the roots of mountains. Lacolites are small. They are smaller than batolites. Meanwhile, the seal is um, a small feature that lies along the bedding planes of um, sedimentary rocks and dikes on the other part, they simply cut across um, sedimentary rocks. Third question, sheet-like intrusions that cut across previous rock units are sheet-like intrusions that cut across previous rock units are A. Dike B. Seal C. Lacolite and Z. Batolith. The right answer is A. A. Why? We said dikes cut across bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. They cut across. Meanwhile, the seals, on the other hand, they lie along the bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. Lacolith, like we already know, are dome shaped features and batolites are mostly found at the base and are huge features or dome shaped features still again that um, form the roots of mountains. Next exercise. What is volcanic intrusion? What is volcanic intrusion? It is when magma rises and solidifies within the crust to form intrusive volcanic features. It is when magma rises and solidifies within the crust to form intrusive volcanic features. Next question. List four features and their examples produced as a result of volcanic intrusions. List four features and their examples produced as a result of volcanic intrusions. Answer. One, we have the seal. An example of a seal, we have the great wind seal of England. Remember, the example is the Great Wind Seal of England. Two, the dike. An example of the dike, we have the Cleveland Dike of the USA. Next, the Lacolite. An example, the Black Hills of South South Dakota in USA. And the last one, we have the Batolid, an example, the Matupu Hills in Zimbabwe. Those are examples of intrusive uh, landforms or intrusions and their examples. Third question. Identify and name the Plutons numbered on the diagram below. Identify and name the Plutons numbered on the diagram below. I'll give you a few seconds to go through the diagram.
look at it very keenly and provide answers. This is number one. What is number one? Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. And number seven. All right. Number one will be Ilakoli. Number two will be Small Dyke. Number three, a battle leaf. Number four will be a dike. Number five, a seal. Six, the vent or pipe. And seven, the local leaf. Here we are. Number one, the Lacoli. Number two, the small dike. Number three, the battle leaf. Like this, the battle leaf. And we can see that the battle leaf here, it forms the root of a mountain. We can see it right up to this point. Then, that was number three. Number four, a dike. Take a look at the dike here. Remember we said a dike cuts across bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. You can see this is the main dike that is actually cutting across these bedding planes. But this other dike is a smaller dike which is yet to cut across. We can see the difference. Okay, we have the seal, and we said the seal equals and solidifies along bedding planes of sedimentary rocks. We can see the seal. That should be um, number six. Oh, it's number five, yes. Number six now, we have the vent or the pipe. Here we are. That leads to the mountain. And we can see how the mountain is, you know, sending out, pumping out the lava at this point. You can see the lava outside here. And you see the ash or smoke at the top of that mountain. All right, so we have the vents. Then the last one we have is the lopolith. Remember we said the lopolith is a saucer-shaped feature that pulls and solidifies along the bedding planes of the sedimentary rock. We can see this, it looks more like a saucer. So that's the lopolith. So these are the answers to our question. If you had it correct, then well done. All right, we take an assignment for the next class, and our assignment reads thus. On an outline world map, on an outline map of the world, identify and shape areas prone to volcanic activities. On an outline map of the world, identify and shape areas prone to volcanic activities. That's assignments. All right. We have come to the end of our lesson. Remember, we have other sources we can always check for more information. Visit the websites like ResearchGate, um, CameroonWeb.com. Visit textbooks like um, Aqua Constance Al and Changvi, 21st Century Physical Geography, and many others to get more information. Our next lesson is going to be on extrusive volcanic features.